context, they gave you each a piece of pink paper and a piece of green or blue paper, depending on which you got. Um, basically, we're going to ask you some questions. Pink is yes, blue or green is no. So just hold them up and then take a look around and see how everyone else answers. Okay? So we decided to present on gender, body image, and <coughs> self esteem in the media. <clears throat> so, do you feel good about the way you look? the media affect how you feel about yourself? And do you see enough people in the media that look like you? Cool. Thank you for answering our questions. Um, I'm going to ask you another hypothetical question. You don't need to answer, but just think about it while I'm talking. What makes you beautiful? So media, media shapes us in ways, possibly more than we even realize. From our interactions, our self-worth, our perceptions of ourselves and of others, and our general outlook on how we stack up physically to not only the people we stand next to on a day-to-day -day basis, but an ideal, unrealistic norm in the media. I've been told since I was a little girl that my worth was basically directly proportionate to the number on a scale, the size of my hips, the color of my skin, and the length of my hair. As a white female, being tall, thin, tan, with long blonde hair is often considered ideal. Well, as you can clearly see, I'm short, I'm pudgy, and as one of my classmates has said, I'm pale enough to do a white balance on my skin, and I have short, dark hair. So, somewhere the ideal versus who I am seems to not quite line up. But does that make me any more or less beautiful? To some, absolutely. Some people will look at me and immediately believe that I am less desirable, less deserving of happiness, and less of a human. Learning to love and embrace our bodies can be difficult, particularly when the media portrays such unachievable standards as normal. If we look at magazine headlines, we see that the media will attack individuals on any small flaw, whether it be too fat, too skinny, too muscular, or just too anything. Individuals are ripped apart in the media. You see the cover of international magazines that people are told over and over their bodies aren't good enough. When we see magazines and various media outlets portraying these beautiful men and women as less desirable, how is it possible that we can ever see ourselves anything less than ugly? Uh, traditionally, body image is seen as more of a girl's issue. However, in the past decade, a growing body of research has emerged exploring body issues and men. A 2011 case study by Clark and Tiegman entitled Sociocultural Influences and Body Image found that 50% of both boys and girls in grade 10 felt that they were either too thin or too fat. The study concluded that adolescent boys also experience anxieties about their bodies, although they are usually less willing to talk about them. Health professionals also noted that boys, <coughs> like girls, are not immune to media images that promote narrow standards of beauty. The media has become a platform that projects strong views on how we look, that we as individuals often unknowingly or knowingly validate and perpetuate. The more we look at perfect images of others and then look to find those same ideal idealized characteristics in ourselves and don't find them, the worse we feel about ourselves. It's a cycle that breeds discontent. As our discontent with how we measure up when compared to our societal or media norms increases, the more negative our body image and the more likely we are to fall into habits of eating, extreme dieting, exercise compulsion, eating disorders, unnecessary plastic surgery, and steroid use for muscle. <coughs> the media is such a powerful tool and it reinforces cultural beliefs and values. And while it may not be fully responsible for determining the standards of body image, it definitely makes dodging the onset of image, onslaught of images and attitudes almost impossible. What makes you, you? Media pushes us to be better, earn more, and look the same. It can be hard to find a strong and diverse subject matter. From a young age, children are often taught gender stereotypes. Even toys, even toys at McDonald's are called girls' toys and boys' toys until early 2016. Girls are meant to be 
quiet and your aunt dressed a certain way, and boys are meant to grow to strong people, constantly bringing the needs of others above their own. As a child, things that you come into contact with every single day are given gender-specific traits before you can even form a coherent thought. Even colors are classified as boy or girl instead of blue or pink. Huffington Post writes that gender roles, as an example, exist solely because society as a whole chooses to accept them, but they are perpetuated by media. Even toys, uh, sorry, even toys, something as simple as an item used to cause enjoyment to children, can be marketed to certain genders. It is a fruitless effort on your past to find an ad of girls playing with action figures or video games, or boys playing with Barbies. Only in late 2015 did Barbie first put a boy in one of their ad campaigns for Moschino Barbie. Brands take whole stereotypes and run with the idea that they will sell products with them. It's weird because things like video games were first introduced as gender neutral. In the 80s, if you were playing Pong, the dog didn't have a gender, it was just a dog. It was mar marketed to the whole family, not just boys like video games are now. From the dawn of media, men were given a role and women were given a role. Only recently have we looked deeper into these roles and analyzed the fact that they don't exist outside of our dated perception. The film we watched in class, Misrepresentation, was a look at, how, at women, how they are represented in media. It came from the perspective of a woman about to have a baby, trying to evaluate the kind of world that her daughter was going to grow up in. Men are shown as strong characters who are meant to provide for their families and beat up the bad guys. Women are shown as mothers, caregivers, love interests. As a woman, your self-worth in the media is based entirely on your looks. Is it hard to be a woman surrounded by media? You know, I was at rally last night and some guy came up and he said, I saw you at Fox and Friends this morning. Is Gretchen as cute in person as she is on TV? And what did you answer him after that? Or just say, oh, you look her today. Beautiful dress, you look wonderful. Gretchen, you look wonderful. Gretchen, very, very beautiful dress. That great color. Right. In summary, Gretchen's beautiful. Oh, beautiful, you look beautiful. Well, thank you. Let's take a break. Can you tell Gretchen she is definitely winning today? She <laughs> looks amazing. Wow. You know, it's not because Fox and Friends is too hot, but Gretchen is really too hot. Blame her. And skirts, Gretchen, I guess what you're wearing right now, the skirt might uh, cause some trouble. Would not be advisable for the yeah. Gretchen is going to ride the mechanical ball fly from our snowy plaza. And a lot of viewers are concerned that I'm going to have the skirt on when I do it. I'm not sure, but concerned, that's an interesting word. In the next two minutes, will Laura Ingram be able to change outfits because she has come to the studio dressed identically to Gretchen? Well, 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 all women should be reading bra stories. Correct. Uh, that's uh, that's but then again, some men are experts at You learned that in broadcasting knowledge. Bra, yeah, yeah. bra stories defer to the babe. Doesn't waxing hurt? Uh, <laughs> he looks at me for that. We'll try that uh, on an upcoming episode of Fox and Friends. Do you like a oh, woman masseuse or a male masseuse? Just so I know. Oh my God. Not on TV. I'm not going to hear that. Not, you know what? Not, 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 Right. Would you like to correct yourself on that other talking point about uh, men being dominant? Oh, we don't have any time. Oh, we should <laughs> But ready, we're ready, uh, Okay, because HR's on the phone because you called me a scratch. Yeah, they, uh, that's, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, okay. I've got to read that manual again. <laughs> I'll bring it to your office right after the show. Yeah. It was the only sexist person that came on here and made you laugh. <laughs> All right? <laughs> uh, well, other than sit next to you every day. Right, that's true. <laughs> I'm not, uh, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, uh, I'm not following. You're just a just sexist. Yes. Okay. I jest, but I'm jest. <laughs> just in time. I think we should read the headline. I think it's just you. Okay. As a woman in news, the most basic and informative me of media platforms, women are objectified. The media takes the female body and objectifies it to the point that women are ashamed to wear clothes that make them feel comfortable or ashamed to leave the house without something on their face. And why shouldn't they be afraid? Fox and Friends news anchor Gretchen Carlson was objectified by her co-hosts on live television. They made jarring remarks about her body, her clothing, her appearance, and compared her to other anchors. She had no say in the matter. And through each ordeal, she remained calm and collected, only showing her emotions on her face, and doing her job as professionally as possible. It's definitely hard to be a woman surrounded by media. It's hard to be a man. It's hard to be a person. Bigger role in people's 
lives than we tend to think. And one of those roles that media plays is on our self-esteem levels. A person's level of self-esteem tends to vary based on what they see on social media sites. One of the biggest ways that the media can affect our self-esteem is by making us think that if we don't live the perfect life, we may as well not live at all. Um, as the media changes, so does the way we view others and ourselves. In a study done by French researchers in 2013 from Institut Pluridisciplinaire Hubert Curien, they found that the more time a person spends on social media sites, the more depressed they will get. Um, this ties into our battle for the most likes on sites like Instagram and Facebook. Um, if we don't get the recognition we think we deserve, we tend to think less of ourselves. But there is also more to media than the online aspects. TV is a huge problem for some people because of the certain content that it shows. Some shows have aspects of drinking and partying. There are many introverted people who aren't comfortable going to parties and things like that, and they feel the way they do because they want to be noticed, but they don't want to go to these types of events. Whereas extroverted people tend to love putting themselves out on social media sites and tend to have higher self-esteem to begin with because they don't care what people think about them. Introverts tend to have lower self-esteem to begin with, and because of that, they are susceptible to be affected by certain types of media that they see. I, for one, am a fairly introverted person. Um, I tend to avoid people unless I absolutely have to talk to them, or if I've gotten to know them and I've known them for a long time. As an introvert, I tend to feel pressure to attend more events and to put myself out more because we can never get the urge to actually do it. This tends to affect my self-esteem level because I, I feel that no one ends up really caring about me and they just kind of forget about me. This can also be described as having social anxiety. This is something that many people suffer with because they just can't find the strength or drive to put themselves out on social media sites. There are so many different ways that media can affect the self-esteem of a person and that's something that we need to be aware of. So, so.